So I had this wild idea recently. Could I text message my apps? And how would that work? Could I send images? Because it all felt a little overwhelming when I started to think about it because I got to get SMS, that has to go to code, that has to then be saved in a database. We need user authentication. It all has to go to the UI. And it just felt a little like, eh, it's probably too much. But... It turns out modern tooling is like good, good because between Convex, Twilio and Clerk, I can build this whole app in like 200 lines of code. Huge thanks to Convex for sponsoring this video. I'm Jason Langsdorf. Let's learn something new. Okay, so our first step is going to be to clone this convex Twilio text log. I'm going to use the GitHub CLI. I want to run this dash 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 B start to get the start branch. Open that up in our code editor. And now we can see here that we've got a pretty straightforward app. We're using Clerk for authentication. We're going to use Vite and React as the basis of the app. And we'll be integrating convex and Twilio here shortly. So the first thing we want to do is get this thing ready for development. We are going to need our Clerk publishable key before we can do much of anything with this app. So let's start out by heading over to the clerk site. You want to log in or go to your dashboard. Then we're going to add an application and we want to give it a name. I'm going to call this snack tracker. We want to uncheck email address, check phone number and uncheck Google. This entire app is built around texting things to the application. So it's required that we set up a phone number. So we'll create that application on the next page. We see all of our information, including this publishable key, which is what we need here. Drop that in to our dot env dot local dot example, and let's rename it. Drop that example. So it's a dot env dot local. Now we can start our app. So let's install the pen and then we'll npm run dev in a Vite window of 5173. So we can head over here and hit this. And now we have the ability to sign up or sign in. So I will sign up. Once the account's created, you can see that we've got it here. It's running locally and we're ready to actually start building things. But we can see we're missing our Twilio phone number. So we need to go and get that set up. So on Twilio, log in. And once you get to your console, you're going to need to either set up or use one of your existing numbers. So once you're on your console, head over to phone numbers, manage, and then active numbers. And if you need to, you can buy a number. In our case, we're going to use this one right here. So I can just click into it and copy this number. In here, we're going to paste this number, but I want to change the formatting just a little bit. I tested this to make sure that it works with an SMS link so that you could actually click this and open up the messaging app. And just because of that, I'm formatting it this way. You can format it however you want. It really doesn't matter. But once you have opened this up and set it up, it's going to show us the phone number. And now if I click this, it'll ask me if I want to open messages and send it text. Right now, sending a text won't do anything. So we need to do a little bit more setup before that'll work. And that is all going to involve convex. Let's get convex set up. We're going to open up a new terminal window. So I'm splitting my terminal to keep Vite running over here. I'm going to npm install convex, and then I'm going to run npx convex dev. And this will initialize convex. We'll see a folder pop up over here. So I'm going to create a new project, put it on the learn with Jason team. We're going to call it snack tracker. Now we've got a convex folder. It's got a few generated files in it. This is where we'll work for all of our database configuration. And it also updated our .env.local. Now, because we already had one created, it did something a little bit weird here. Cut that and paste it right there. So now we have our convex deployment. So for dev, this is the name of the site. And the convex URL that we're going to use for development is this one right here. We'll get to what this is for in a minute. And with that, our environment is set up. We can close that file and be done with it. Our first task with any database is to define the tables that we're going to use. So we're going to create a new file. Let's call it schema.ts. And we're going to define a convex schema. Now, convex schema is optional. You don't need one, but by defining one, we're going to get type safety and we're going to get runtime validation, which are both big benefits. So I would recommend setting this up to do it. You import define schema and define table from convex's server helper. And then we also get this V, which is really similar to Zod. If you've used it before, we're going to define our message field. So anytime that someone sends a text to our app, we're going to save the text message itself, who the sender was and any details about the image if one is set. And that means that we need the text as a string, the sender is a phone number as a string, and we're going to get the image, which is either an object with an ID and a URL, or it's going to be null. And the URL can be a string or null. And that's what this union is for. So this gives us runtime type checking whenever something comes in. If we get something in a bad format, it's going to complain and send errors, which is good because we want to know if our upstream data formats change. Then we export the whole thing in a define schema call. Messages is the name of the table. Define table adds our message fields in here. And then because we're going to be searching by someone's phone number, we're going to 
create an index on the sender field and name it by sender so that we can look up those messages very quickly. So after saving this, if we head over to the convex dashboard and log in, we'll see that there's now a snack tracker project. In our app, someone could only post if they're logged in. So we want to integrate convex and clerk. So we're going to head over to the clerk dashboard. And in our project here, we're going to hit JWT templates or JOT templates, depending on what your preferred shorthand is. We're going to hit new, choose convex. We can leave the name as convex. And then we're going to copy this issuer URL. So let's apply changes back in our project, create a new file in the convex folder called auth.config.js. So inside we're going to set up the provider. The provider is our convex application and the issuer URL goes in this domain. And this is actually all it takes to integrate convex and clerk kind of feels like magic, but I'm pretty happy about that. So next let's set up our provider. So inside main.tsx, we're going to make some changes here. We need to grab out a couple things from convex. We're going to get the convex provider with clerk. They've got that built in for us. And then we need the convex react client. And then with clerk, we need to import an extra hook called use off. That's going to be passed to this convex provider. Next, grab the convex react client. We're going to pass in that Vite convex URL that we set earlier. Then inside the clerk provider, we're going to wrap the app with a convex provider with clerk, pass in that convex client and the use auth hook from clerk. And once this is saved, now our app has access inside of our convex database calls to the clerk identity. So there's a helper now that will let us pull in details about our user, which is going to make it so much nicer to query against who the current sender is. So create a new file called messages.ts and inside let's create our first query. We do that by importing the query helper from convex's generated stuff. And the reason we use the generated is because it's going to give us the ability to get type safety and auto completion in the actual query helpers, which is a really, really nice feature. We can export anything we want. Uh, this is what will be used as the method name. And then we call this query helper. We pass in a handler. We'll look at how args will work a little bit later. And the handler is an async function that receives context as an argument. And that context is going to have all sorts of helpful things. The most commonly used is probably going to be this dot DB. And to query the messages, we're going to run context dot DB dot query. And then we put in the messages table and this is auto completed. So if I come in here and I put in a string, it knows that the messages table is the only one available. And then we run dot collect. But because this app is a log, we only want to show it to the current user who is allowed to see it, right? So we want to actually pull in identity information. So to use identity, we're going to rely on that context again, and we're going to grab the context dot off dot get user identity. And this pulls whoever is logged in in convex into this identity variable. And then we can grab their phone number because again, we required that someone is logged in using their phone number. So now because we have their identity, we can run with index by sender. And then this queue allows us to filter. So we're going to filter on the sender field whenever it equals the currently logged in users phone number. If we save that, we now have a query that is runnable in our app that will load the currently logged in users messages. Now that we've got a query, let's actually run it. So we're going to head into the source components messages.tsx. So first we're going to import use query from convex, and then we want to import API from the generated API. And this is what's going to give us access to our get function, which we can see right here if we hover over the top. Now that we've got those, we are able to load all messages using this use query and then api.messages.get. And again, this is fully type safe. So as we auto complete our way through it, it's going to show us everything that is allowed and it will give us the details on what gets returned, all that great stuff. If nothing is returned, we're going to make sure that we get an empty array. And now that we've got the messages loaded, we can display them with a little bit of logic like this. And so this is going to grab out from each message, some system generated fields, the ID and creation time, as well well as the text and the image. It'll loop over those. If there is an image, it'll display it. Otherwise, it'll show the text and when it was posted. And this is, again, only going to show posts from the currently logged in user. And we did that for a little bit of moderation. We don't want people to be seeing posts from other folks because we don't have a moderation team and we don't know what people would do. So looking at this homepage, we can see that nothing is being displayed. And that's because we haven't saved any messages in our database yet. So let's make that happen. We're going to set up an HTTP action, which will accept those incoming text messages and convert them into database items. So back in messages.ts, we are going to export an HTTP action called save. And to do that, we're going to need a handful of things here. First thing is we're going to do a little bit of TypeScript wizardry with the aid of some built in types from convex. So we want the message and we want the message with only the fields that we defined in our schema, right? So they give us without system fields and then they give us doc to be able to grab out the messages doc type and then strip out the systems fields because otherwise we'd have this ID creation time and that could give us some false negatives because we're not creating those fields. The get query is unchanged, so we're going to collapse that. So to define
define our save method. We're going to write all this code out. It's an HTTP action that takes an async function. This is going to give us our context object if we need it, and also the request. And that's what makes it a little bit different than a query or mutation is we get an incoming HTTP request. This is the same as a bog standard browser request object, and we need to return a response object, which is also a standard HTML response object. So the way this works is Twilio is going to call this as a webhook, and that means it's going to send over the message and that gets sent as a uh, URL encoded parameter string. So we can run the URL search params. It's a built-in API to turn the body into a message object or a, a params object. And then we can pull out the text, the sender and the image URL all here. We do need to validate this. We'll do that in the next step. We'll check if there's a sender. If not, we're going to send a 400. Otherwise, we'll store all the details into message here. Uh, we need to add handling to save the images, which we'll get to in a bit. We also need to write the mutation to save the image itself. For now, we'll just log it and then we will return a response that says everything went okay. So let's save that. And now we need to make it callable. So to do that, we're going to create a new file. And this is a special name in convex called HTTP.TS. And inside of it, we need to expose that save function at a URL. So what we're going to do is import the HTTP router and the save method that we just created, create an HTTP router and expose a route called messages, make sure that it only accepts post and set up the handler as our save function. Once we've saved that, we now have a public endpoint that we can set up for our Twilio number because Convex is always running in the background. And so it's already up and it's deployed on our dev environment. To set this up in Twilio, let's go into this .env.local and we're going to grab this URL here. But there is one small change because Convex uses .site for endpoints. So we're going to copy everything here except the cloud. And then we're going to head over to Twilio. So on the Twilio console, if you go to your active numbers and choose the number that you've got, then scroll down to messaging configuration, you're going to have these options here. So when a message comes in, we want to use a webhook. We're going to set up our URL here. So we paste in that URL without the cloud. We change it to site and then we define messages as our endpoint. And then we make sure that it's an HTTP post, save the configuration. And now let's head over to the convex dashboard and go to the logs and go ahead and send your Twilio phone number a text. So we've now got messages coming in from Twilio and being posted to convex, which means that they're ready to be parsed and saved and all the things that we need. So because this is going to allow external input to be saved to our database, we need to make sure that we're validating it. So we're going to validate this webhook using a built-in library from Twilio. So if we stop our Vite server, npm install Twilio, and then we'll restart that dev server again, we need to create a helper that will validate our webhook. So to do that, we are going to create a new file. This one is going to be called validate.ts. And the reason we're creating a new file is that this one needs to run in Node. So by default, Convex actually runs in a custom JavaScript runtime that if you need to run a NPM package, you can add use node at the top of any of your convex files and they'll switch over to a node execution environment, which is great because a lot of the times you won't need it, but when you do need it, you've got it. So this file is going to export a method called Twilio webhook, which is an internal action. An internal action can only be called by other convex actions, queries, and mutations. And this is helpful if you've got things that you only want the system to be able to do. You don't want a programmer, for example, to pull it out into the rest of the app and try to run it there. This internal action is going to accept arguments. The arguments are defined the same way as the schema. So we're going to get the signature from Twilio, uh, the URL that was the webhook was sent to and the parameters that were sent. And these will be a string, a string. And then because Twilio might change those parameters at any time, we're going to set it as an any. The handler is an async function. We don't need the context. We're only going to get the args. And then we use this Twilio helper that we got out of the Twilio package to validate the request. And we're going to need to set up this Twilio auth token before this will actually run. So let's save this and then let's go get that auth token. So on the Twilio console, you just click on your account name. You can see your auth token is here. So I'm going to copy that. So this one, we don't want to save in our app. We actually want to save it in convex because convex is the one that's going to be calling it. So we're going to go to settings. We're going to set up an environment variable, and this is called Twilio auth token. And we're going to paste this, click create. And now we've got the Twilio auth token saved in our environment, which means that the validation will work. To actually use it, head back to messages.ts. Up at the top, we're going to import internal from our generated API. And then where the 
this to do is let's replace it with a call to that internal action. So the way we do that is we use the context. We're going to call run action and then internal dot validate, which is the name of the file and Twilio webhook, which is the name of the action we exported. And then we pass in the parameters that it requires. And if it is not a valid webhook, we're going to return a 422, which is a unprocessable entity. Save that. So if you send another text, it's going to continue to work. So if we want to see this fail, we can pull open something like Postman. We can put in our webhook URL here and we can send a post request with some data, send that, and we will see that we got back a 422. This means that we won't be able to actually spoof calls. You need to have a valid Twilio webhook in order for this to work. So next up, let's actually save these messages. So to do that, we need internal mutation out of the generated server. And then we're also going to grab those message fields that we defined in the schema. To use these, we're going to go down below our HTTP action and we will put in a new exported helper called save message. That's an internal mutation because we only want to save validated Twilio webhook calls. We don't actually want a developer to manually create a message somewhere else in our application. The args, we pass in the message fields, which allows us to deduplicate some of our code. And then as a handler, it's nice and straightforward. We grab the context, we run a db.insert into the messages table using the arguments that were defined. And that's it. So to actually call this, so in our save function, in this placeholder, let's take that out. And instead, we're going to use the context.run mutation. And then we use internal.messages.save message and pass in this message that we defined here. So let's save that. Assuming everything works as expected, when we send this text message, it should be saved. There it is. Now, something interesting just happened. That happened in real time. I didn't have to refresh the page. I didn't have to do anything at all. I just sent a text message and it showed up in the app. That is a wonderful bonus of Convex that always makes me want to reach for it first because I didn't have to think about real time. It just happened. So our last step here is we want to make sure that we can text images. So let's head back into messages.ts and we're going to add the ability to save an image. Up at the top, we want to get the type action context and then we can collapse these down because we don't need them right now. Down at the bottom here, we will create a new function that will export called store image. This one is not an action or a handler or a mutation. It's just an internal helper. And that is going to be an async function that takes a context and then the image URL. And we're just going to pass the context right from our save function. So inside, we're going to fetch that image URL. We're going to make sure that we got something. Otherwise, we're going to return null. And if we did get something, we grab it as a blob. And then we're just going to use Convex's built-in file storage to store that image blob and then use the ID that comes back to generate a URL so that we can display that in our app. Once that's done, we're going to return an object that has the ID in the URL. And that's what we will save in our image handler here. So to actually call that, we are going to do a try catch block where we're going to try storing an image. And if anything goes wrong, that's OK. We're just going to log that something went wrong. Otherwise, we will set the image field to be whatever the ID and URL are that are returned by store image. So once we save that, why don't we go over to our convex dashboard? I'm going to go to the data and I'm just going to clear this. So I'm going to check the box here and delete this document. Now, if I head back over to my app, it is empty and that's it. It's working now. So we can just start texting images and little notes to ourselves and we've got a snack tracker. So again, the way this works is we've got a Twilio number. That Twilio number calls a convex action as a webhook and then that webhook gets turned into a new database entry by convex after being validated and all of it happens so fast in real time and it's all behind auth We're using clerk. It's just a magical experience that takes so little time to set up. Truly blown away by how fast and fun it is to build these types of apps. I've let a lot of good ideas die because I talked myself into thinking they were too complicated. But with tools like Convex, that's becoming less and less of a valid excuse for me because to be honest, I'm having fun building databases like this. And I'm having fun hooking up a bunch of third party APIs to see if that wild idea can get out of my head and onto the screen. And I love the state of the web today because these tools are making it possible for us to spend all of our time building and so little time building the boilerplate that lets the ideas function. I'm excited for what this unlocks for the web. And I hope you're excited too. And I hope you'll share it with me. Best way to do that is to subscribe to my newsletter and reply to any of my messages with something you built. Thanks again to Convex for making this one possible. We'll see you next time.